What does Undertale, The Witcher 3, Life is Strange, and The Wolf Among Us have in common? Well, aside from them all existing in my Steam library, they each feature a powerful selling point. Your decisions are meaningful. Sure, some of these games demonstrate that idea better than others, but ideally, players should finish the game and walk away with a unique experience based on the decisions they made. We actually see this in all games. For example, in Valorant, do I pick a shotgun on defense or do I pick an SMG? One might be a better fit than the other, but my decision will affect my impact on the outcome of the round, for better or for worse. However, in the games I listed previously, it's not just tiny short-term decisions that are important in the moment, but those small decisions make incrementally larger impacts on your experience with the game. This video is about a little indie I found on Game Pass called Astrologaster and how it does this in just a moment, but first, Let's define this idea called player agency, then use an example to get us there with Astrologaster. Gama Sutra's Josh Beiser defines player agency as the player's ability to impact the story through the game design or gameplay. Okay, I like that, simple enough. So for this opening illustration, I'm going to contrast two board games. If you don't play modern board games, by the way, you are sorely missing out. There's a trove of treasures. So first, let's compare Monopoly, a capitalistic classic terraforming Mars, a game where you make Mars great again. For many of you, you might consider Monopoly an absolute unit of a classic. You might have memories of busting out your Redneckopoly or Millennial Monopoly or whatever with your family over the holidays. If you enjoy Monopoly, that's great. But Monopoly, aside from literally not being designed to be a fun family game, but instead to showcase the long-term effects of economic privilege, it has a fatal flaw. See, in Monopoly, everyone starts on even playing ground. This is good. However, as the game progresses, players randomly land on more expensive properties, buy them up, develop them, and Monopoly turns from a fun time into a slog, a game where you roll dice in hopes of avoiding jail and your opponent's high value locations. Where Monopoly fails is giving you agency as a player. Why does a player end up buying Boardwalk? Well, they randomly rolled some dice and landed on it. Why does a player get to develop Boardwalk? Well, another player randomly landed on it and they paid them. Sir, you initially made the decision to purchase Boardwalk instead of auctioning it off, but how you got to that decision and the outcome of that decision are important. So let's compare Monopoly with Terraforming Mars, a 2016 release from Stronghold Games. At Terraforming Mars, players act as corporations and develop Mars through card drafting, terraforming oceans and forests, and lots of big brain science. Now there are many, many ways Terraforming Mars gives players agency, but here's just two of them. One, opening strategy. At game start, each player must choose between two corporations, a handful of projects to pursue, and in later expansions, multiple other variables to tweak their strategy. Each of these decisions will heavily determine what sort of game you'll play. Some games you might stock up on titanium to buy high cost space event cards, others you'll be laying down forests and boosting your plant production to do so. There's dozens and dozens of successful strategies in terraforming Mars, and the best thing about it is you can create whatever strategy fits what you want to do. Another way is two, through card drafting and card play. Each round, players are dealt four cards. Like a Magic the Gathering booster draft, players pick one card, and give the other cards to the next player, and so on. Each card you pick is informed by the strategy you've already set up earlier in the game. By the time you're one round into terraforming Mars, you've probably made anywhere between 12 to 16 meaningful decisions, that's not a joke. After one round of Monopoly, you've made one meaningful decision, grabbing the thimble as your player piece before anyone else gets it, I mean, let's be honest, that's the best piece. Your performance in terraforming Mars is not determined by rolling some dice, it's personal choices you make in order to set yourself up for success. If you lose the game, well, it's your own fault. And by contrasting these two games, it, it's a pretty good example of how player agency, or how your choices, made an impact on the outcome of the game. So here's where Niam Yam's point-and-click comedy game Astrologaster comes into play. Let me see now. According to the stars, the way to cure the plague is to treat the fever. It provokes. I shall now go forth with my miraculous strong water to cure all London of the plague. I found this game randomly on Game Pass, lots of random great gems on there, but in Astrologaster, you play as Dr. Simon Foreman in Shakespearean London. 
The foreman uses astrology to treat various conditions of his patients, or queerants, in hopes of being considered legit enough to get a medical license. It's really so he doesn't land in prison, you know, because he rolled doubles three times in a row. Oh my gosh, why is that a rule? Anyway, Astrologaster is not a great game, but it's very clever and quite humorous. Your queerants, who are all terrible caricatures of your least favorite co-workers or family members, they show up an allotted number of times, present you with their life problems, and ask you to read the stars and guide them toward the best decision for them to make. We're getting meta here. Your guidance to them is determined by looking at the stars, reading the text presented by those astrological signs, and doing your best to surmise exactly whatever it is your querent actually wants. Yes, many times you might not be trying to read the future to help them, but instead telling them what they want to hear so they like you more. And you do this because if they like you enough, you get a letter of recommendation. When you get eight, you get your medical license. In fact, though Simon at first seems the only sane character, and also the most noble, over time he becomes quite lecherous, and focused more on his legacy than the livelihood of his querents. After a couple hours in, I wasn't particularly in love with the game, but it was short, and I found the writing charming, and I wanted to finish it. The voice acting is pretty good, and each character enters your office with a snarky, renaissance-style musical set piece. Who's this man at the door who we've not seen before? Who's this man at the door who we've not seen before? However, I was a little frustrated that my choices felt random. Sometimes I thought my dialogue with the character was hinting toward a specific response, but on selecting that option, the character left the office angry. Like Monopoly, I was just rolling the dice and hoping for the best. But I was wrong. My decisions actually had much more impact than I first thought. We're now entering spoiler territory, so be warned. There are some characters in Astrologaster that I cared for more than others. Some simply bored me, like the initially revolting Mary Payne, a conspiracy theorist who actually ended up a murderous anarchist. Others, like Amelia Lanier, were fascinating, as Simon guided her through an unhealthy relationship with a thieving playwright. Nicholas Mugg is one such character I found particularly uninteresting, who thinks he's always sick from something. It seemed like his ailments were pointless and he just wanted confirmation that something was truly festering within. In Mugg's final visit, he asks Simon for some kind of healing for its bumps or I can't remember, something similar like that, but I decided to give him whatever he asked, really because I was just clicking through his dialogue to get his visit over with. Once a potion was mixed, Simon recommends him to take a certain amount every night for a couple weeks, but instead Nicholas grabs the entire vial and downs it immediately and dies instantly. This shook me. It was violent, unexpected. The game purported to be a silly comedy, but took a turn for stark and dark realism. If I pay more attention to Nicholas's story, I would have noticed all the signs. He was a desperate man. He was driving his wife crazy with his supposed illnesses. He was seeking validation from someone. Maybe if I'd suggested a different option, he, he could have survived. My choice mattered here. The ways I listened and treated Nicholas in previous consultations mattered. A virtual life I didn't care for suddenly spoke volumes to me. And it's not just Nicholas. In the game, big news events take place periodically, announced by the town crier. There are some querants that I'd advised drastic prescriptions for, such as attempting to bed the queen, or giving advice to make their last few days special. These querants would later show up in the town crier announcements as dead or killed. These moments struck me. It made me sit back and think. There was no silly dialogue, no singing choirs. The reality of their ends began to sink in. Perhaps the developers intended for some of these moments to be comedic, but to me, they were dramatic and sad. I'd assumed my choices didn't matter, but they did. They were critically important. That's why Astrologaster surprised me. It comes off as this silly little choose your own adventure. Sure, Astrologaster has problems, like the gameplay isn't really that interesting. The ending is very abrupt, and it's all very repetitive. But I won't remember Astrologaster for those problems. I'll instead remember the choices I was given. I'll wonder if I should have clued in Alice Bragg that her husband was on his deathbed. I'll remember Simon's final words in the game as he ponders how he'll be remembered once he dies. I'll remember looking up the true Simon Foreman's story on Wikipedia. Astrologaster brings up questions of the value of human life. It made me think honestly about how do I treat people, how do I care for people that I know. Do I flippantly disengage when talking to people, or do I take the time to listen to them and engage them? Astrologaster ain't no Undertale 
genocide run, and it certainly didn't make me weep, but it did make me think. It made my choices as a player meaningful. To me, it's a perfect example of making player agency count when it matters most. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I stream on Twitch three nights a week and would love if you could join us on stream. Thanks. Choleric temperament, madam. I see. And what treatment can you give me for it? Before we speak of treating your condition, madam, I think you...